KPM. Hmm. Shafika? Um, um, yes, Mr. Quack? Do you mind passing me the yellow ball on top of the box? Oh, that one? Yeah. Sure. Oh, oh wait. It's too dark, Mr. Quack. I can't see anything. Oh, man. I can't even okay. see the ball. I have this torchlight here with me. Let me help you find the ball, yeah? All right. Oh, it's right oh. there. There it is. All right. I can see it now. Here Yay. you go, Mr. Quack. Thank you. Sejahtera everyone, you're watching Didi TV KPM for our slot Tahap 2 today with me Shafika Farahin. And as you can see just now, we have our teacher. He's going to be teaching us the subject Science DLP or Dual Language Program. But before we get further into the, into the details, let's first introduce our sign language interpreter who is teacher Shazlin Sulaiman from SK Pendidikan Khas Melaka. Hi teacher Shazlin, how are you? Great. All right. Now here with me in the studio is none other than our science teacher who is also the Ketua Panitia Science from SK Kampung Lindungan Selangor, Mr. Quack. Hi, Mr. Quack. Hi, Shafika. How are you? I'm great. You're looking super smart today. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> just now we had a short um, sketch where we demonstrated something and I found the ball after a torchlight was uh, shone onto the ball. So what was that about and how does it relate to our topic today? So to just now, based on the sketch just now, is actually to show everyone that today we're going to learn about light travels in a straight line. Oh. If light doesn't travel in a straight line, it's impossible for us to find the ball just now. Oh, so it doesn't curve, it doesn't go sideways, it's straight. Yes, exactly. All right, Mr. Quack. Okay, so for now, we're going to go into the first property of light, which is light travels in a straight line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are some of the examples of light travels in a straight line. The first example here shows uh, a picture of a uh, concert. Okay, based in a concert, usually the atmosphere is very dark and dim. So, when light is shone, okay, shine, shone, uh, shine upon mm -hmm. the, the, the floor, it gives a it gives a different feel to the the whole concert, right? Ah, uh, yes, And then it also it helps it helps us to focus which is the main singer and main uh, or the dancers at the moment. Okay. Uh, so this is for light. Tra uh, this is how light helps during a concert. Mm -mm. Okay. Next, number two is during a rescue mission. Especially, uh, this usually happens at sea. Okay. So if let's say there's an accident or, or a ship is uh, leaking, mm -hmm. the the leaking uh, or spoil or faulty, or there's a uh, the wave actually accidentally uh wreck the whole ship and all that ah. so they need to dispatch a rescue a rescue mission so the helicopters are the rescue rangers to send the helicopters mm -hmm. to the sea to look out for the rest survivors oh this is especially uh, is important during night right yes especially at night mm -mm. okay and the third picture shows a lighthouse this lighthouse is uh is important because it is it serves to uh warn warn the uh, warn the sailors or the mariners mm -hmm. that they are close to the rocky and shallow coast ah. uh, so that they don't knock into them and cause a damage to their ship. Uh. All right, uh, okay. okay. And last of all, we have this uh, very beautiful photo. Uh. It's a, it shows a photo of a forest mm -hmm. in the morning where the sun ray will just shine through, shine through the, shine through the forest and mm -hmm. we can see the ray of light. Uh. Yes, they look very straight for all the four pictures. Yes. Mm -mm. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. we are going to sh do an experiment. All right. To show that light travels in a straight line. Ah, to help us with the experiment, I have here something that will help. So, yes. let's start, Mr. Quack. Yes, could you please pr uh, bring it forward? All right, okay. Mm. So, here it goes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, what I have here is three... Manila cards. Okay, the first Manila card uh, here, the first one uh, in front, 
I've already uh, cut a slit in the center. Mm -hmm. The second Manila cut, there's, there is a slit on my left. Mm -hmm. And the third Manila cut, there will be a slit on the right. The, or the opening. Eh? Right. So what we're going to do is, we are going to do this experiment by placing all the three uh, uh, cardboards aligned mm -hmm. to each other. Okay. Okay, so the first one will be here. Mm -hmm. Second one. And the third one. I see. I'm going to tighten it up a bit. So parallel to each other. Yes, exactly, mm -hmm. Shafika. Mm -hmm. Okay, where is the torch light? Oh, ah. we need the torch light for this. Yes. Okay. So, Shafika? Yes, let me do the honor of shining ah. through this. Okay, let's see if you can see anything on top of the screen. Okay, is there All any? Right. Is there any, what do you call, <gasps> shadow appearing on the screen or light appearing on the screen? Mr. Quack, I don't see anything. Ah, hmm. Yes, you're right. There's nothing there. Yes. But now, I'm going to move the second cut towards the left. Mm -hmm. Towards my right. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to move the third cut, third manila, manila cut towards my left. Uh, oh, Mr. Quack, I see something. Ah, yes. What do you think is try what do you think this experiment is trying to tell us? It tells us that the light moves in a straight line. Very good, Shafika. Ah. Yay. Okay, light travels in a straight, straight line. line. And the line is very straight as mm. it approaches the manila cut as well, Mr. Quack. Yes. Everyone mm. at home can uh, can try this experiment as well. You just got to have the torch light, manila cut and some wooden blocks. Okay, uh, Mr. Quack. Now that we've tried and proven from our experiment that light travels in a straight line, I believe you have a bit of a quiz to tell me. Hmm. Yes. Okay, I would like you to name one more example mm -hmm. a situation where light travels in a straight line. Oh, another situation. All right. Hmm, perhaps when I'm driving at night mm -hmm. and I need to see what's in front of the road, what's in front of my car on the road, mm. the lights of my car, the headlights. Yes. Is that an example? Yes, that is exactly correct. Because you need the headlights to see what's in front of it, especially at night, right? Ah, uh, and mm. also at parks. There's street parks as well, street lights. Yes, yes. All right, Mr. Quack. So how was my answer just now? Excellent. Thank you so much. All right, pupils, I hope you got that answer correct as well. We'll be going for a short break first and we'll be right back here on Did It TV KPM. Welcome back to Slot Tahab Dua for DD TV KPM. And for this segment, I have a question to ask Mr. Quack, our science DLP teacher for today. Now, Mr. Quack, um, there are some cases where I see objects. They have shadows, but some shadows are not clear, some are less clear. What is it about that? Why is it like that? Yes, because hmm. uh, this has got to do with the type of object. There are three characteristics of mm -hmm. it. Uh. So basically, first of all, you need to know that shadow is formed when light is obstructed, uh, it's blocked by an object. Mm -hmm. And these objects, there are three types of it. Okay, so there are three types of object. The first one will be, uh, we have this uh, opaque object, we have the transparent object, right. and also we have the translucent object. Oh, okay, so okay. based on the slide here, the opaque object, if you can see from the slide, uh, the ball which is behind the opaque object, mm -hmm. you cannot see, because the ball is behind the opaque object, we cannot see the shape of uh, the, the ball at all. At right all, now. okay. Yes. So for the second one, it's trying to show, you, show us that if a translucent object is placed in front of the ball, we can see the ball, but it is not clear. Ah, just a bit. Yes, mm -mm. and last of all is the transparent object. So if uh, the transparent object uh, allows all the light to pass through it, mm -hmm. therefore we can see the ball clearly yes. yes all right so based on that okay we can see that 
OPEC, uh, OPEC object shows that it does not allow any light to pass through it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we cannot see the ball at all based on the uh, based on the picture just now. Just now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Secondly, is translucent. So translucent means it only allows part of the light to pass through it. Therefore, mm -hmm. the the shadow is slightly uh, it's not clear. It's yeah, it's not clear. Less clear. All right. And last of all is the transparent object which allows the light all lights to pass through it mm. therefore it's the, there's no shadow at all i see okay all right mr clark so based on that we are going to do uh, an, an experiment exploration uh, to mm -hmm. see how the shadows are because just now it's just theory and all right all right so in front of us we have three beautiful butterflies, butterflies okay uh, okay so these butterflies are made out of three different uh, objects mm -hmm. okay so the first one the green one here it's uh, made out of manila cut all right the second one here is made out of colored plastic and the third one is made out of a transparent object mm -hmm. okay so shafika mm -hmm. which one would you like to test first can i try the one that has the full color green on the left side here okay mm. there you have it Okay, I remove this. So this one is made of Manila cut, right, Mr. Yes, Quack? Yes, Manila cut. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shine it upon this screen here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's, let's try that. In the meantime, pupils watching, you can also try this at home, right? Yes, it's easily made because this is just made out of uh, Manila cut and popsicles. All right. Let's yeah, see. Popsicle Mr. sticks, Quack? not popsicles, huh? Mm hmm Okay. So from here. Can you see that the shadow is formed? Ah, oh, yes. Is it clear or not clear? It's clear, Mr. Quack. I can see it very clearly. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. So right now, what do you want to try it with? Uh, can we try the one that is very um, clear there? Right okay, on the right hand side. Right on the right hand side. Huh? Okay, let's try the second one. Second one, okay. Uh -huh. The second one, here okay. you go. All right. Okay, let us see. To see whether there is any shadows or not. Okay, peoples, let's watch carefully. Can you see any shadows here? Hmm, I can only see the shadow of the popsicle stick. Mm -hmm. Yes, that shows that trans it, it is a transparent, transparent object. object. Yes. Oh. Okay. All and right. Last of all, we're gonna try it with the last. The uh, coloured. Yes, the coloured plastic. plastic. All right. Okay. Let's see how. Does it form the shadow or not? Oh, uh -huh. there is shadow, right? There is, but it is? Quite, it's not so clear. Oh yes, mm. it's less clear. It's Excellent. Less clear. Do you want to put all of three, all three of the objects together to let everyone at home have a clearer picture? Yes. All right. I think we should. Okay, hold because on. Because we did an experiment, so we have to we have to jot down the findings as well. Yes. All right, Mr. Quack. Okay, here you go. Let's place all three of them in front of okay. the Box. screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have all of the three objects here. Now let's and have a look. Voila. Wow. So what's your observation, pupils? Can you see mm. how the shadows are? Mm. Okay. So from here, we can see that this one, there's no shadow. Uh-huh. This one, there's a very clear shadow. Very clear. And for this color plastic, it's less, it's less clear. clear. Mm. Okay, Shafika. Right. Yes, Mr. Quack. Do you mind help me to answer some of the questions that is on the whiteboard right now? All right. Here I have the objects here, Mr. Quack. Yes. Manila card, colored plastic, and clear plastic. Yes. Hmm. And then the clarity of the shadow. So for the Manila card, the shadow was very clear. So I'll just put down clear. Yes. Okay. Excellent. And then for the colored plastic, it was less clear, right, pupils? So. Wow. Okay. So far, so good. All right. Okay. And last of all. The last of all, it was clear plastic, and there was no shadow at all. So the answer is? So the shadow is, the shadow is none. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very All good, right. Shafika. You deserve at least 
four stars for this. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, Mr. Quack. Now, I believe we have more experiments to come because, of course, science class is all about experimenting and seeing if your hypothesis is correct. So we'll be right back after this break first and see you then. to the VKPM for our level 2 slot. And for this segment, I believe I have another question to ask Mr. Quack. Now, Mr. Quack, just now we saw that the shadows were formed and none had shadows as, at all. But the sizing of the shadow, are they all the same? No, definitely not. Oh. Actually, shadows, we, had, we can change the size of the shadow and also the shape of the shadow. Mm -mm. Uh, so, in this segment, we are going to talk about that. All right, uh, great. Okay. Let's begin. So, let us look at some of the factors that affects the size of the shadow. So, first of all, what we need to know uh, need to know is mm -hmm. this is a screen. Okay. Okay. This is a screen, and this is the object, mm -hmm. and we have the light source. So, this is the light source, the object, and the screen. So, the this. The factors that affects the shape, uh, the size of the shadow, is, uh, is uh, due to the distance mm -hmm. between the light source and also the object. Oh. Okay. So it depends how far it is. Right. Yes, how far it is, and also the distance between the object and the screen. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to look into how the distance between the light source and the object, the distance between both of these affects the size of the shadow first. Okay, let's do this experiment. I can't wait. Okay. Mr. Quack, what's the first step? So the first step is, we're going to place this... Uh, object. Object uh -huh. here. Okay. All right. And then we're going to measure. Okay. Okay. Measure the distance between the light source and the object. All right. So the first experiment is, uh, we need 5 cm. 5 centimeters. Yes, 5 centimeters. Okay. All right. So from here, mm -hmm. so let us have a look at the size of the uh, shadow, yeah? Alright, for this first experiment, the light source and the object has a 5 centimeter distance. Yes. Mm. Okay, now you can see it clearer. Alright. Okay, this is 5 centimeters. Oh. Okay, so now we are going to alter it to 10 centimeters. Okay. Okay, the distance between the object and the light, light source, source is increased to... 10, 10 centimeters. centimeters. Oh, wait. Okay. The the shadow got smaller, Mr. Quack. Yeah, so mm. as it gets farther from each other, farther means as in the light source and the object, object. is farther from each other, the, the what do you call? We can see the, the shadow difference is, inside. Uh, yes, the shadow is smaller. Mm -hmm. So if I go it nearer, if I go near nearer, the size of the shadow is going to be bigger. I think we ah, uh, uh, arrange it like that a bit to, okay. so that they can the people at, pupils at home uh, can All see right. better. Okay. There you go. So this is bigger. Mm -hmm. That one. And if I move it further, it's going to be smaller. Ah, wow. Uh, bigger. It's almost the same size as the, as the object at oh, one sorry. distance. Bigger. Uh huh. Smaller. Mm. So as okay. Is it clear? Yes, it's very clear, Mr. Quack. Okay. Right. So now we're going to do, uh, what we're going to do is, I need your help to fill in the answers on the here. whiteboard here first. Yes. Okay, so there was two variables, the 5 centimeter distance and the 10 centimeter. So the size of the shadow was bigger for the 5 centimeter. Yes. Uh-huh. And then, for the 10 centimeter, it was smaller bravo yes excellent shafika it's correct yes all right so but just now like i mentioned just now we have two factors uh, two factors that affects the size of the shadow so just now yes. we altered the distance between the torch light mm -hmm. and also and the object mm -hmm. so now what we're going to do is we're going to change uh, okay we're going to use this mm -hmm. okay we're going to change the distance between the object 
and the screen. All right. Okay, so I will need your help to move this forward. Can. Uh, okay. So I'll I'll hold the object. Okay, so in this experiment, mm -hmm. we will not change the distance bit, uh, of the light source. So okay. Shafika is going to move the move object further, further from the, the screen. screen. Okay. okay, let's so try it from here. We need to wait for the lights. All to go right, let's dim. cue the lights and see. Okay. Uh huh. Okay, so now it shows that the light source, uh, sorry, the object mm -hmm. and the screen is far from each other. Yes. So the image, the shadow form is bigger, right? Uh huh. Let's move it closer. Yes. So oh. when it is closer to the screen, so when the screen and the dis distance between the screen and the object is nearer. Mm -hmm. The size of the shadow is also smaller. Smaller. Let's try that again, Mr. Quack. Okay, Bigger. as you move further. Alright. Bigger. And, and then smaller. As you get closer to the screen. Oh, it's becoming the same size. Yes. Almost. Alright. So, uh, I hope everyone at home understand the concept of how to change the size of the shadow. shadow. Okay, moving on. Mm -mm. We're going to look into, just now, we have already uh, mastered what how to change the size of the shadow. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to look into how to change the, the shape of the shadow. All right. Okay. So the shape of the shadow, um, the shape of the shadow has two factors that affects it. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first one is the orientation of the object, and also the position of the light source. Hold on, yeah. Okay. So let's have a look. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Quack. Okay. So, what do you mean by what do you mean by changing uh, the position of the light source? So now we have two uh, two screens here. These yes. are two screens. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to place it um, vertically, horizontally. Wait, yeah. Ah. Oh, this one. Okay. Oh, no, no, upright. I think we're going to put it horizontally. Okay. Okay. Horizontally. So Shafika, I need mm -hmm. your help to shine. Upon the object All right. from this angle mm -hmm. and also that this angle. angle. Okay. Yeah. All so right. you shine it from here okay. and here. Alright, let's okay. do that, okay? So I'll move here first to shine it here. Okay. Alright, okay. there you go. So do uh -huh. you see the shadow? Yes, uh, it's like a it's, circle. Yes, it's a sem hemisphere. About a, yeah, circle. Or a semicircle. Hemi semicircle, yes. All right. Okay, now if you change the position of the light source, mm -hmm. you go towards your right. Okay, I'll be going towards my right. Okay, let's keep a close watch, pupils. Okay. All right, there you go. Uh -huh. Now let's have a look. Oh, it's a different shape this time. Yes, it is. A uh, rectangle shape, right? Uh -huh. It's a rectangle shape, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. So, as you change the position of the light source, mm -hmm. the shape of the shadow also changes. Changes. Ah, oh, okay. That is what is meant by orientation of object. No, the position, position. of the light, light source. source, right? Okay. Now we're going to look into the orientation of the object, okay. whereby you just change. Just uh, put the object, object up, upright. Upright, okay. Yes. Oh. Uh, so from here, let's have a look at the shadow. Okay, can so, you people see that? Okay, so now you put it down. So you change the orientation of the object by putting it down. Take it out. Putting it down. All right, lay it uh, down. Yes, yeah, so you get a different size, right? A different type of shadow, right? Yes. Now. Yes, that is, that's, that's what is meant by changing the orientation of the Object. Okay. You can even change it in other positions. In other positions, can I perhaps make it like this? Yes. Make it yes. a bit angled? Yes, let's have a look. Oh, it's slightly bigger at this end actually. Mm. Ah, or it's if, bigger here. If you choose to move it here, mm -hmm. let's see how is the shadow like. Oh, ah, it's a circle. Yeah, so I hope everyone at home has the right idea about this. Oh, so right. uh, the shape of the shadow is mm -hmm. affected by orientation of the object and also the position of the light source. All right, Mr. Quag, I believe I've learned so much from all the experiments from today. So perhaps to give a brief uh, a conclusion uh, for this class, Mr. Quag. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what we have learned today is we, learned, we have mastered the first property of light, which is light travels in a straight line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Secondly, we have also uh, learned about the clarity shadows of the object. 
okay and we learn about the translucent we learn about the transparent and opaque object so what i have here just to recap so this what i have on top here is a microscope uh, the slide of a microscope so as you can see this part here it's a translucent mm. because when i put my finger behind it uh, you cannot see the it's uh, less you, clear yeah, it's less clear mm -mm. but in the center it is clearer you see ah, ah can you see yes, yes i can see that mr Craig. Yes. so mm -hmm. this part is transparent this part is translucent all right okay and last of all is the opaque object so opaque object uh, examples of opaque object is for example the wallet mm -mm. can you imagine that your wallet is actually transparent <gasps> you can see all the money inside yes that's not safe yes that's not safe mm -mm. okay so opaque object doesn't allow light to pass through it so it's safe our money is all safe there yes i believe <laughs> so all right mr quack now that we've done all the experiments and you had questions for me as well how did i do on an overall skill for today's class mm, you did fairly well i think you deserve five stars five stars thank you mr quack and i hope all you out there answer the questions correct as well and got five stars like kat shafika now uh, where can our pupils access extra materials yes, for you, revisions yes they can get it from the portal de lima all right portal de lima i believe we have a bit of activity for the ending of this class but i would like to thank mr quack for teaching us today science dlp and also our sign language interpreter till we meet again assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera bye bye Let's go, Mr. Quack. Okay. All right.